Hey everybody, uh, another vlog here. Y'all got me on kind of a roll. Uh, so based on uh, discussion in my previous blog and also the vlog before that, I wanted to ask folks their kind of origin story. So whether it's board gaming or miniature gaming or tabletop games in general, I'm genuinely curious about your origin story and sort of how you got more involved in whatever hobby it is. So, you know, how you started playing games and did whatever, and now maybe you call yourself, I don't know, a hobbyist or something. So I think that term is a little weird, but everybody kind of approaches this a little bit differently from everybody else, although we have some similarities. So I thought I'll go ahead and share my kind of origin story. I don't know that I have ever really properly done that. I know I've probably mentioned it on different podcasts and things. And just to note, there's no other video for me this week. I will be showing up on the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast tomorrow from the time this video drops, talking about the Age of Sigmar 3rd Edition Dominion box set. My video of that will be next week. Right now it's like 110 degrees, and you can probably hear my AC in the background, and it sounds terrible on like a normal video, so I'd like, I'm just going to do a vlog today, and the AC won't be that big a deal. So let me give you my origin story. And again, please uh, do a response uh, comment, or if you want to make a video response, I don't see, think people do those so much anymore, but... I'm generally curious about different folks uh, from different backgrounds or whatever uh, and their sort of a, approach and how they got into hobby and you know what your journey kind of was. I'm generally curious about that. So mine was basically I played games as a kid, you know, Monopoly and Candyland and uh, Hi-Ho Cheerio when I was really little and all that kind of stuff. I did have a copy of Dragonlance, the board game, when I was young. I think I must have been eight. I'm not sure. Something like that. You know, kind of like middle between teenager and toddler, somewhere in there. And uh, I saw that at the game store. I was like, I really, I really want to have that and stuff. And I think my parents bought it for me. I don't think I saved my allowance or anything. I think it was a gift. And uh, so got that. And we, my brother and I played that uh, a few times where we would play I remember playing like one-on-one -on -one with two factions of dragons and then like three-on-three -three with three factions of dragons. It's a big sprawling game with lots of little miniature dragons and stuff like that. And so we did that. And uh, specifically my grandmother, she taught me how to play cards. So we played gin and we played uh, a couple other things like that and hearts and spades and that kind of thing with the family. And then my grandfather on the other side of my family, he taught me how to play checkers and chess. I had stayed with them for a couple of weeks, I think. And I was pretty young when he taught me checkers and a little bit older when he taught me chess. So I was visiting them uh, in Illinois and stuff like that. So that's kind of like, you know, kind of planting the seeds, which I think is probably important of uh, exposing a child to games is, is probably a really important thing. Uh, I think in general, I mean, beyond like your concerns about the hobby, I think it's a good thing for kids to play games and use their brain in different ways. So that kind of happened. And then, you know, I picked up books like Choose Your Own Adventure books. I had the original, not the original, but like the second edition, I think, D&D box set because I picked that up at that same store where I picked up Dragonlance. And my thought was I would play this game and I kind of thought it was like a Choose Your Own Adventure game because it had like a little adventure you could actually play all solo and did that. And then I never really found anybody in my neighborhood. We had a lot of kids in my neighborhood and uh, nobody's really into that. We just played basketball and rode our bikes around or whatever. And um, so... That kind of, the gaming stuff sort of just kind of faded away as I got into high school and then even into college um, because it really focused on, on my college stuff, you know. And then after college, I met some folks and they were playing Catan and then they were playing Magic and all that stuff. I kind of knew about Magic uh, through college because, you know, you'd see just run into people that were playing and I was like, this is like baseball cards, but you play a game with it? That seems stupid. <laughs> you know, but I wasn't, my mind zone wasn't even in that arena at all so I, I started so i played magic after college and a little bit i never bought any cards or anything i sort of borrowed cards uh from friends and we proxied a bunch of cards because we didn't care we were just playing like you know kitchen table games and stuff and uh got into that and then Catan was there and then probably i don't know like a year or two after i played Catan, maybe just only a year uh through a friend at work i met another friend who that eventually that sort of guy and his wife and, you know, another couple and some other folks, we kind of made what was called a game group. But they introduced me to Loan Hers, which is now called Domain, and then Carcassonne and uh, stuff like that. And then eventually Power Grid when that came out and Kalis and Puerto Rico and a lot of those Euro games, Princess of Florence and all that kind of stuff. And so they and we also did like Poker Nights, too, because this would have been back in like 2004 or five. And poker was like a really big deal in the United States. 
uh, with the World Series of Poker. Remember, you know, back then it was like a really popular thing and a lot of people were doing it. And so I played in different poker groups and stuff like that. Not like a lot, just, you know, different groups of friends and we'd throw a poker game together, nothing serious. And so actually as poker became more popular, these folks actually, some of them got really into it. And so our board game nights kind of turned into a poker night or they turned into like Guitar Hero Night or something. And so the board gaming stuff kind of went away from that group, which, you know, was fine. I was still having a good time playing poker and uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band and things. Uh, but that kind of went away. So I kind of did a dip in the board games. And then I don't remember what happened, but I found out, oh, I know what it was, uh, a buddy on Facebook that I used to play the Versus card game with. So after, in the beginning there with the Catan and all that stuff, I also picked up the Versus card game because another buddy of mine, we would he would go to the shop and pick up Magic cards and Versus, it just come out, it was like a superhero card game. And there was a sign that said, you could win $40,000 playing this game, it was a brand new game. And I kind of met the shop owner who I still know today and uh and they, you know they're really kind of touting the game and i'm like well i like comic books you know so i picked that up and i got like a box of that and then i just got into it and me and my buddy went back and played and it was really cool because it didn't have uh land you know mana it was just like the resource system was a lot better i thought at the time and so we got into it and then i picked up a couple of boxes i actually won a couple of tournaments uh local tournaments and then went to like a pro tour thing i skipped over this whole thing <laughs> and then went to like what they called a 10k and i think i got eighth or ninth I got I got some money out of it but I didn't you know get to the very end uh so that kind of stuff went went down as well and so one of the guys I know that I sort of used to play online with on in verses he put out a message on Facebook we were Facebook friends and he says hey some of the guys actually designed uh verses and they're actually pro magic players uh, they've come out with a new game called Ascension. It was a deck building game. And I had no idea, like uh, Dominion completely passed me by. So I picked it up. I'm like, oh, these guys are cool. I, I mean, they made this game that I really enjoyed. And it's like, it's just a game that you buy a box and you got all the cards and you play. And that same friend that I went to the shop with and he was getting magic cards, and I got versus cards, I, I bought it. And I was like, hey, let's try this game out. It's just like a game and you build your deck like as you play and stuff. And I was like, really weird. He's like, what? And we played it and we played it like dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And, uh, you know, like every Friday night, basically, we would play, I don't know, like a dozen games every Friday night. And really loved it and got into that. And then what happened was, is um, I actually wrote a Vassal module for Ascension. And I put it, there's a video on this channel still for it way back when. And they said it was cool. Like the guys that designed the game were like, no, whatever. And I actually worked this, the booth uh, at Gen Con for them one year, uh, sort of teaching Ascension when the first expansion came out. And so, yeah, that kind of just sucked me in so i made that video for ascension and i think that that little vassal how to play video is what triggered me to sort of like oh i put a video up on youtube and it wasn't too long after that where i was like oh look at board game geek you know i would post things on board game geek. here's the new module and this is before they had the amazing app that they have for ascension and then i just got sucked back into board game geek because i had you know been on it like in 2005 to give my buddy a bunch of geek gold because he made this uh uh, player aid for Puerto Rico, which is like still the number one thumbed player aid for Puerto Rico. And he's like, Hey, you know, can you kick me some geek gold? And I just like logged in. I think you got like a hundred geek gold or something back then for some, some like uh, drive to sign up people up. So I signed up and I poked around boarding geek a little bit back then, but didn't really think about it. But then as I got more involved with Ascension, I got more into it and I found like the dice tower videos, Scott Nicholson videos and all that kind of stuff. And I just got like, sucked in. I was like, oh yeah, these are the sport games that, you know, my group used to play, but we play poker all the time. And, uh, and I had bought like Kalis and I think I had a power grid back then and Tiger's and Freddy's. So I had a handful of like maybe half a dozen games that I had in my closet that I would sometimes bring over. And, uh, and yeah, and then from there it was like, whoosh, you know, just off the roller coaster, off down sliding, you know, into the abyss that you are seeing now. Um, and just, you know, kind of getting more and more involved with the game. So my origin story is kind of you know, there's a lot of sort of details there in, in, in uh, specific points, you know, uh, going into the game shop. And the guy, like I said, I know that guy that runs that game shop. He's actually moved out of this town. He's in the next town over into Spokane. And he's like a big 40K shop. And, you know, I'm playing Warhammer stuff now. Um, but, yeah, so that's it's kind of all over. And, you know, I think even those kernels of, like, the Dragonlance board game with the little dragon miniatures and stuff, that kind of planted the seed of miniature games later on with these big dragon armies that you would move across the board and all that kind of fun stuff. And then getting into the Euros 
early in the 2000s or the mid 2000s, uh, you know, kind of planted that seed. So it just kind of running into people and meeting people and uh, just kind of word of mouth is eventually how I got into it. And then once I kind of got really invested in one game, Ascension, I got was like, that one was like amazing to me. And, uh, and then that kind of brought, sucked me into Board Game Geek when I was just like, you know, really looking at Board Game Geek and finding all the different games and different ideas and worker placement mechanics. Because back when I played like Kalis in Puerto Rico, I wasn't thinking like, oh, this is a role selection game. This is a worker placement game. None of those kind of things were going on. I'm like, is this cool? Is this fun? And all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I gotta be honest with you, like I never really liked Puerto Rico or Princess of Florence, but I really liked Power Grid. And we played uh, Age of Steam, and we played k which I love still, and Lo and Hers and Tigers and Euphrates and all the Ryan Crazy games. Carcassonne, I didn't like back then, but then I kind of grew to like that one. Uh, but yeah, so it's you know kind of a thing there. Uh, so I just wanted to share that was kind of my little rambly journey. And uh, I'm very curious about all your all's journey, and just kind of curious, like, what kind of moments sort of triggered you to go down your different pathways uh, and everything. So I've talked about my kind of journey into the miniature games with discovering Warhammer Quest Silver Tower and Frostgrave and that kind of stuff a bunch. Um, so that I kind of discovered five, six years ago and then it sort of added that extra piece of my gaming arsenal or something. Uh, yeah, and then I guess the only thing I mentioned here is I did dabble in the role-playing game stuff. I mentioned getting that early D&D &D box, never really touched it. And then actually in college, uh, there was a guy at my dorm and they let me sit in on a, a few games and they were running a campaign. I was like, oh, D&D, &D, you guys are going to do this. And it was terrible. Um, and the DM sucked. And uh, I didn't really like it at all. But I, a couple of the guys in the group I enjoyed hanging out with otherwise. So, And I've played a little bit of role-playing games over the last couple of years. Just kind of one-shots and things like that. But, um, yeah, that was not a good experience at college. The, the, I don't know. The DM was a douchebag. <laughs> so, yeah, he's just like the worst, you know, pictured like the worst kind of DM RPG type of personality. That was that guy and it wasn't super fun or anything yeah so <laughs> um yep so that's it for me uh what do you got thanks